the lights and stayed on the 10th floor, listening if someone was there. In about five minutes, I heard someone or something moving. I was relieved, but anxious at the same time. Relieved I wasn't wrong, and there was something on the floor. Anxious because what was on the floor? I turned on the lights and tried to sound as manly as possible saying something in the line of, I know there's someone here, show yourself. As you can imagine, no response. So stupid I didn't go down to call for help, but stupid me went looking for whatever it was on the 10th floor. I walked to the office I heard the sound from, turned on the lights and found a little girl who couldn't be older than 13 with long brown hair in white pajamas squatting and rocking front and back on a desk, looking straight at me. The scary thing was there was no emotion in her face or in her eyes. After almost shitting myself, I collected my nerves and took the girl by the hand. I took her down to the front desk, offered her a coke but she didn't respond whatsoever. The only thing I could do was call my supervisor and told him about what I encountered. My supervisor's response was, stay there, I'll be right over. The time I hung up on the phone until my supervisor came, I just had this underbelly feeling with this girl that there was something really wrong with her. Before my supervisor turned up, he called me and told me to call an asylum which was pretty close to the office building I worked at, just to check if someone was missing. Why would there be a 13 year old girl in an office building with no houses nearby whatsoever? So that's what I did. I called the asylum, asking them if there was someone missing from the asylum, and I got the scariest response you could get. They told me, yes, as a matter of fact, someone is missing. I gave them a description of the girl sitting next to me, and it was in fact the girl who was missing from the asylum. They told me she was really dangerous, and that I should watch my back at all costs. They immediately send people over to take the little girl with them. A week later, my supervisor told me the story of the little girl I found, since he talked with the people from the asylum. It turns out the girl killed her mum and dad and little brother while they were asleep when she was 11. Even in the asylum, she wounded staff members, either by stabbing them with a pencil, or in another case, biting a piece of an ear off. To this day, we still have no clue how she ever came into the building. We checked all the cameras and there was no footage of her ever entering the building. Number 1 I work